Hello everyone, welcome to the imprint and today we are at the final video of our visual paintings, visual arts uh, from the CCRT and today we're looking at the modern paintings and I would say that uh, they actually are, uh, you know, an, a different league uh, in comparison to the others. Uh, so, you know, I would like to introduce first uh, the Bharat Mata and this is the most famous painting of Abhindana Tagore. Uh, so this is something that, uh, you know, it has become even a chant today. Uh, then uh, we have the Ganesh Janani and this is Parvati and Ganesha. And these two are one of the most famous paintings. Uh, this was done in 1908. And uh, finally, uh, but I think if you think about it, uh, you know, Abhinara Tagore uh, was the father in some ways of the Oriental school. But uh, if you look at Raja Ravi Varma, his paintings are, you know, a fusion of uh, what was best in the west and the east and you can see this is ravana uh, abducting sita and look at the facial expressions of ravana uh, look at uh, how sita is you know trying to say you know please save me and check out jatayu right whose wing has been cut by ravana and the jewelry that you know the way how well made uh, you know ravana has been and look at I would say it's fascinating. Uh, you know, whenever I see a Raja Ravi Verma painting, I think it's fascinating and it's beautiful, right? So uh, let's uh, continue our discussion. So modern Indian painting, um, what roughly many consider that the modern Indian painting began in 1857. This is a historical premise, right? Well, it's because the National Gallery of Modern Art, New Delhi, in case you are in Delhi, please go uh, when you know COVID gets over. So uh, it covers uh, its collection from about this period. The modern period uh, starts conveniently with the Impressionist. However, when we talk about uh, the modern Indian art, uh, we look at the Bengal school. And both in matter of precedence and importance, we have to follow the course of art in the order of painting, sculpture, and graphics. So uh, graphics is the least development, so in that is it. So um, another of, uh, this is uh, Shah Jahan, Right, uh, looking at the Taj Mahal, uh, so Shah Jahan dying. This is one of the most famous paintings of uh, uh, Abhinandan Tagore, right? And this is something I think all of you should uh, appreciate. I would say. Uh, then, uh, towards the close of the 19th century, uh, Indian painting as an extension of Indian miniature painting snapped and fell into decline, right? And degenerated into feeble and unfelt imitation, largely for historical reason, uh, both politically and sociologically, it resulted to a lacuna, which was not filled uh, until the early years of the 20th century, and even then, not truly. There was only some uh, minor artistic expression in the intervening period by the way of the bazaar and company style of painting. We'll talk about those. Apart from the substantial folk forms that were alive in different parts, like the Bahari school, the Hyderabad school, etc. Uh, then what was newly ushered was the Western concept of naturalism. The foremost exponent was Raja Ravi Marma. And these are the two uh, great examples of that. So this is Rama and Varuna basically, uh, you know, so Rama is angry that he's not giving path. So, right, uh, this is that story. And this is Satyavati, uh, you know, uh, with um, the father of Bhishma, right? Uh, so again, so this is... Uh, there is a concept of naturalism. So you can actually, you know, see the facial expression uh, in a lot more. So, you know, I would say that this is even better than the Mughal miniatures in some ways. Uh, this was without parallel in the entire annals of Indian art, notwithstanding some occasional reference in Indian literature of the idea of likeness. Uh, then an attempt to stem the sculptural morass was made by Abhinana Tagore, under whose inspired leadership came a new school of painting. And it was romantic and nostalgic to start with. Uh, for three decades, Bengal School of Painting also was the revivalistic or the Renaissance school. Now, you can appreciate the fact that this revival was also happening or also happened after this uh, in our uh, literature, in our, uh, I would say, freedom movement even. So there was a revivalist trend in the 1800s, all right, uh, after 1857. So Swami Dayanand, Swami Vivekanand, uh, if you look at uh, Balakanga, like they all, uh, you know, going back to the Vedas uh, was one of the calls that they also had. So these trends in, in the Indian school of painting uh, 
They had projection of the disturbed social unrest and instability with the predicament of man as the main theme. There was an interest in Indian thought and metaphysics. Uh, it was manifested in the tantric paintings and in paintings symbolical import. Okay, and more so, uh, uh, more than these two trends is the new interest in the vague surrealist approach and in fantasy, uh, which happened. Now, what was the company style? So this is one of the most famous, uh, you know, paintings of Bahadur Shah Zafar. This is him. And the company style or the company Kalam in Hindi is a term of a, the hybrid Indo-European style of painting made by artists, by, you know, Indian artists, many of them who work for European patrons in the British East India Company. Uh, that's in the 18th and 19th century. Uh, this was a blend of Rajput and Mughal paintings with the more Western treatment of volume, perspective and recession. And most paintings uh, were reflecting the Indian tradition, miniature tradition, but the natural history of paintings of plants and birds, right, were, you know, usually lifelike. There was no exaggerations which were there, right? So uh, this is, uh, these are one of the two. This is a Delhi book in which the various places in Delhi are shown, right? And uh, this is again one of the most famous paintings. So uh, the naturalistic style became a little different, I would say. Now, uh, Let's now talk about a few of the painters. Let's say we talked about Abhinder Tagore and Ganesh Janani. So Abhinder Tagore was born in 1871. Uh, was a principal artist and the creator of the Indian Society of Oriental Art. Uh, this, he was also the ma first major exponent of the Videshi, uh, Swadeshi values in Indian art, and he founded the Bengal School of Art, which led to the development of modern Indian painting. He basically sought to modernize that Mughal and Rajput style to counter the Western model of art that was taught under the British Raj. Uh, so along with artists from the Bengal School of Art, he advocated for a nationalistic Indian art derived from uh, the Indian art history, drawing inspiration from the Ajanta Caves. He was so successful and his paintings were so valued and so respected that it was, he was, it was promoted as a national Indian style within British art institutions even abroad. And uh, what the movement, as we said, was known as the Bengal School of Art. Uh, it basically originated in Shantiniketan and Kolkata. And it was basically known as the Indian style of painting. And Bharat Mata, I said, is his biggest example. Uh, now, if you look at Raja uh, Ravi, Ravi Varma, uh, he was a celebrated Indian painter and artist. And uh, he's considered among the greatest painters in the history of the Indian art and his aesthetic and broader social reasons also you know from that i would say because his works are the best example of fusion so i think a lot of you would have seen this picture and this is there as a portrait of sarasati in majority of the schools that we have in my school we had the same okay while continuing the tradition of the aesthetic uh you know tradition right his paintings employed the latest academic art techniques of the day Secondly, he was notable for making affordable lithographs of his paintings available to the public. And this basically, this is what he did, right? So copies of his paintings were available and this enhanced his influence as a painter, as a public figure. His lithographs uh, increased the involvement of the common people with fine arts and defined artistic taste among uh, common people. So uh, you can see this is Nilottama and there's a very, very famous movie uh, of Priyanka Chopra, and um, others, right? Uh, there's a Singh in that movie as well. And there's, uh, I think, uh, uh, Bonnie Kapoor's son, I think Abhishek Kapoor. So he's also there. And uh, in this uh, movie, Gunde, uh, right? So Nilottama basically uh, causes a rift between the two. Uh, so she is supposed to be made by Vishwakarma, by the orders of Brahma. And she has uh, no uh, policies in her. And uh, Nilottama was used uh, to you know, basically fight the demons, gods. So this is a very, very famous story. Now, uh, these are the other paintings, as I said, uh, this is a lady, look at the dog, right? So real, right? You can actually think of this uh, being a real kid, right? And then this is Sarandari, uh, you know, and uh, so this is Sarandari uh, talking to Simuka eh, from the Mahabharata. So the themes were taken from the real life as well, as well as the, uh, you know, the contemporary uh, historical basis by Raji Rabha, Raja Ravi Varma. Now, uh, there is another one, another great painter, right, who didn't live uh, that long, I would say. Uh, she was a Hungarian Indian painter. So, Amrita Sherkal, and you know, I think if you're in Delhi, you'll see Amrita Sherkal Mark. She was one of the greatest avant garde women artists of the 20th century, a pioneer in Indian art. 
uh, right? So Shergill basically um, draw towards painting at an early age. At 19, uh, she uh, got recognition for her painting Young Girls, right? And these are a few of her paintings. These are self-portraits by her. All of them are self-portraits, it seems. Okay, so na naturalistic. So it's different from even the Greek uh, school, right? So I would say uh, this is Amrita Shergill in 1931. All right, and this is her sign here again. So uh, with that, uh, I think very, very briefly, we've covered modern day paintings. Uh, what kind of questions have come? So to, in 2009, we have a couple of questions. So match the list one with list two and select the correct answer. So uh, there's a list of famous persons and well-known person. So Amrita Shergill is, no, is obviously a painter, right? So obviously here we know A is two. So it can be, answer can be A or B. And that's what we, Bhimshan Joshi, uh, obviously is a singer. So obviously it becomes here. Rukmani uh, Devi Arundale. Uh, so he, she was supposed to become the president of India, but she refused. Uh, Moraji Desai, and she's a very, very famous dancer. And then Surikant uh, Tripathi Nirala, very, very famous poet, right? So the answer is B here. Then consider following famous names Amrita Sher, Gil Bikas, Patachare, Enes, Bendre, Subodh Gupta. So which of the following are very, very famous artists? So I think most of them are, I would say, right? Uh, so please uh, do try this question. Uh, thank you so much for listening, right? And uh, uh, with that, if you have any questions, you can subscribe to our channel, uh, comment, uh, you write an email to us or visit our website. Thank you so much for listening.